Welcome to On Microsoft. Conversations with thought leaders in Microsoft technologies. Hi, I'm Lisa Feigenbaum. I'm a program manager on the Microsoft Visual Basic team. I'm here with Paul Vick today. Paul, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah. I've uh, worked for the last 10 years on Visual Basic in a number of capacities as a uh, language architect and compiler lead. And uh, recently, I made a move over to the Oslo team. Um, I decided that after 10 years, I wanted to try something different. Um, and specifically, I work, moved over to work on um, a subset, a part of the M lang modeling language that we introduced at the PDC. Um, I'm working on the subset that's called M Grammar. Great. So you went from the VB spec to M Grammar. So yeah. t tell us a little bit about M Grammar. Well, yeah, in a lot of ways, you know, actually moving to M Grammar is not that big of a move because, in a, as a language architect, I was fully immersed in the job of uh, designing the syntax of the VB language mm -hmm. and. Uh, specifying that and figuring out how that would be expressed in um, building a part, helping to build the parser for it and that sort of thing. And uh, that's really what the M grammar um, language is really designed to do. It's designed to build languages, um, not the whole end-to-end -end experience of a programming language, but just the front-end sort of syntactic aspect of the language. So, um, you know, so basically uh, a, an M grammar program, I guess as you might call it, um, really, what it does is it you know you start with a language declaration. Um, so you, if you were coming up with a little uh, domain-specific language that you were going to use to translate, you know, say you had a format for how to specify uh, customers and orders, um, you would create a language, a language declaration, um, and then you would sort of specify the the syntactic parts of the language. So, so what are some of those elements that you might specify? Yeah, so really uh, designing a language, is, it's a kind of an interesting process. There's sort of two pieces to it. And actually, uh, there are a lot of interesting sort of uh, uh, overlap between uh, designing a language and, and the way we work with just natural English language. <laughs> um, in that you start, the first thing you start with is sort of what, what we call the lexical syntax. So. Um, the lexical syntax is really, if you were to look at an English language sentence, it's you know how you break up that sentence into words. So um, you know you would say this is a word, here's a space, here's a word, here's a comma, here's a word, here's a parentheses. Right. You're not actually talking about what the structure of the sentence is yet. You're just identifying the words and the tokens. The, yeah, exactly. And that's what we, that's what they're called. You know, define a set of tokens that um, initially. So what the M grammar will do is it will generate uh, a .NET com set of source code, .NET source code that will produce a component that that will do this work for you. So it will define a, a lex, what's called a lexer, that will tokenize the input. Mm -hmm. And then what you do is you use the tokens to form a higher level syntax. And so in the English equivalent, that would be like, you know, it would say, okay, here's the subject of the sentence, here's the verb, this is an adjective. You know, here's a you know a conjunction, all the you know the um, schoolhouse rock thing. You know, <laughs> to make starts to come back to you. Um, so just as you know, just as someone who's looking at parsing a human's you know an English sentence, um, you then define using syntax um, declarations. You know, okay, here's here's a clause. Here's a you know so um, so for example, in uh, if you were doing one for Visual Basic, you would have a syntax declaration for an if statement. And mm -hmm. you would say, well, an if statement starts with the word if, and then there's an expression, and expressions are defined later, and then you see the word then. And so um, so really, you use the tokens then to build the full grammar. Um, and so once you have that, you know, then what you can do is for each production, so each sort of each unit of syntax is called a production. For each production, then there's a way to specify what data form, what data that translates into. So the common format sort of between the M grammar and the M schema language is a is what's called M graph. It's sort of a it's a very simple data notation format. Mm -hmm. And so for each production you'd say, well, you know, okay, an if statement produces, you know, this little graph that represents the if statement. And so then either you can take that data and use M schema to put it into a database, or if you're just 
you know, building a little interpreter or, or some other thing that works on language, you can work directly against the M graph instance. Um, so, so you've gone from trees to graphs. Exactly. <laughs> well, you go from text. Yeah, exactly. Different oh, oh, I see. <laughs> indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, I mean, in, in reality, for um, although the syntax can express, you know, full graphs. I mean, in reality, for most languages, they're just trees. They really look like trees. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, uh, I'm just uh, building, building tools now that VB, you know, and that that would be that's an interesting sort of possibility um, going forward. Is the you know whether um, like the Visual Basic team or the C Sharp team could use this kind of a tool, kind of a tool like this, to build um, their own language parsers. Today, most of the language, most languages groups at Microsoft build them by hand, um, which there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, this might be a much, it's a much more efficient process. And uh, and I ha I have to say that you know part of what attracted me to the team was you know you can, you, the nice thing is you you know in a t you know the part of what we announced at PDC is a little tool called IntelliPad to help edit, you know, M schema and M grammar. And uh, there's a mode where you can bring up and you have your grammar and you have a sample source file and then you can see what data is produced and you can just sit there and play. I mean, it's kind of, it's actually it's very interactive. You know, yeah. It's a, it's surprisingly, you know, it's a lot of fun just to sit there and invent little languages and stuff. So uh, it's uh, you could have done that while you're writing the language spec. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I mean, and that's, you know, that's an interesting question is that, you know, that, uh, whether you know the language spec just has a direct you know just M grammar right in there you know saying this is what it looks like so yeah, yeah. so so what's your role as far as the the M grammar are you working more on the implementation side are you kind of defining what this grammar is going to be I'd say a little bit of both it's um it's definitely a, a I kind of sort of filling in an architect role for it so that means kind of a architect is sort of whatever need, whatever needs to be done. <laughs> I mean there are prototypes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but it's um, it's really kind of trying to guide the team, um, help solve some of the uh, there are still a lot of open questions about what um, you know particular pieces of M grammar should do. So help guide that. And also, you know, just um, I my personal belief is that you know an architect needs to get his feet wet or else, you know, it's just it's it's hard to it's hard to have an opinion about something you don't haven't you know had your hands down in the guts of a bit. <laughs> so sure. um, so I've been trying to you know do do some you know some basic things and not cause too much trouble, or <laughs> not create too much disaster. For the I want to do that too early. Exactly. I wait till later. <laughs> I won't to tell them what it was like the on the real BB disaster. Team, right? That's right. Exactly. So. <laughs> so. Cool. Um, so. How do you make those trade-offs in M grammar? Are you looking at different types of languages that you would like to enable and then try and understand you know, yes. what you need to support in the grammar? Yeah, I mean, part of what I think made it attractive uh, for me to come work on this was um, that uh, you know, I had experience building languages. And so that, you know, so certainly I bring the experience with VB and I'm also very familiar with C Sharp, right. you know, bringing that to the table. Um, but then it also is, you know, um, so it's it's about traditional programming languages, but it's also very right. much. This is not just to recreate the VB and C sharp compiler. Exactly <laughs> right. Exactly. We've already got those. We don't need I don't, two more of them. I don't exactly. even know if there's plans for that, but yeah, they're yeah, certainly there's... focusing on other. Exactly. Other and and you know there is a definitely an emerging field of uh, designing domain specific languages, and so Ed is engaging with the community there and, and looking at what their needs are. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. Great. Well, sounds like fun. All right. Enjoy. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. For more information, visit onpodcastweekly.com and subscribe to all our podcasts. Brought to you by the publishing imprints and information portal of Pearson Education.